So what we're going to do now, one of my previous videos um, was a video that showed dynamic lighting effects using a Wonder Woman model with fire in the background and all that sort of stuff. This is going to be, um, and that was quite you know, reasonably popular, so I thought I'll, I'll continue the same thing. I'll use the same model here and um, we'll, we'll use Wonder Woman again. There, there she is, that's played by uh, Georgia. Um, what we can do is um, somehow make this fit into this in as little time as possible and spend as, as little time as possible kind of uh, uh, making it all seamless because um, you can see there's quite different lighting effects going on in both images right now and you're probably wondering how to do that but it's actually not that difficult. So what we're going to do, uh, the moonlight effect, okay. First, that lighting is way off. So what we're going to do is presuming you've already cut your model out and all that sort of stuff. What we do is we go to colors and levels to bring the levels all the way down to something that looks appropriate. Now, in this lighting, uh, this probably looks okay. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. However, there's lighting showing up here on a, on a shoulder here, which if the lighting truly was coming from there, as you can see by the shadows that are cast by the moonlight and the, tr and the, the trees, um, there shouldn't be much light coming on this side of the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a soft uh, feathered cut, 20 feather, it doesn't, depends on the size of your image. Just make sure there's a bit of a feather there so it's not a harsh cut. I'm going to cut around the left side of the body. I'm going to do this carefully and definitely want to get here. You can see there's a lot of light here, so I'm going to get all that. Um, I'm going to try and get that part of the body like that. And let's leave some light there. And Okay, so that part. Now I'm going to actually cut that out. Well, not cut, but I just literally just copied the page of Control C, Control V. I've got a new layer here. I'm going to convert that to a new layer there. So the reason I created its own layer is so that so that you can see is so that I can work on this independently and create a separate shadow independently. Okay. So I'm going to just go to brightness and reduce the brightness all the way down. See the difference straight away from here to here. It's already looking a little bit more reasonable. I'm probably going to do that again brightness all the way down. There we go. That's looking a little bit better now. Okay. I'm going to flatten those. So merge, right click on the top one, say merge down. That, that's flattened both of those two layers. And it's now one layer. Okay. Excellent. The next thing you want to do is, well, she's missing a shadow. When people are pasted onto a layer, they don't, they don't have a shadow. It makes them look like they're floating. So it's really important to add a shadow. Um, there's two ways of doing this. I, my preferred way is to actually create a new layer and cut out my envisaged layer or select my envisaged layer using a lasso tool. So I, what I do, what I end up doing is on my, on its, on its own layer, I um, cut around and I create a bit of a shadow like that as to where it's supposed to go. And that layer sits behind the model so it won't go over the, over the boots there. Um, and then I shade that in with a clone tool to get what's in here and, and put it in here. So that's uh, uh, the reason I would use the clone tools because I can see there's already uh, shadows here and I would want it to be consistent in color with these shadows. If we create our own shadows using black opacity, it's not going to look the same as this and it won't look right. So in the name of getting it right, what, what I'm going to do, uh, there's another way to do shadows. There's a real, there's a bit of a hack here and what it is, it's called lights and shadows. You can do a perspective shadow and I'm going to just put an angle of, well, look, the angle's not too important at the moment. Put it, put it at 90 degrees uh, because it's going to come straight down. However, this is not going to make it come down because 90 degrees will keep it vertical upwards. Um, all right, I'm just going to click OK and just do this. All right, now there's a shadow, moonlight, background, where did that shadow go? Okay, whoops, you can see I created a 
perspective shadow of the uh, moonlight background shadowed, that's the wrong layer selected. So I actually make sure you always have the right layer selected. I'm going to repeat that under filters, repeat perspective shadow. I don't have to redo it. Okay, good. It's done. So that's the perspective shadow there. Let me show you what it looks like. So you can see that that's a perspective shadow. Um, I, I could have angled it to the right or to the left, but I wanted to keep it down because right now, because I can shear that later and get it right. So right now what I want to do is get that shadow layer and f flip it vertically. Okay, good. Line up the boots. You can see what I'm trying to do here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, shear it so that it is in the same angle as the trees. Okay, done. Shear. All right. Where we're going places. So, okay, good. Very, very, very good. Okay, I've put that there. Now what I want to do is, um, again, see, the, the, the quality of the shadow here is very different to the quality of the shadow, and that sticks out. That makes an, an image look very unrealistic. So we want to make it the same as this. Very easy to do. I'm going to clone this onto here, but first I need to select the shadow here. That's how easy I select. I just literally just selected it. Now I want to clone. You can clone across, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but you can clone across um, layers and you just simply select one layer, hold control, click the clone source, select the destination layer, and then, whoops, one thing I'm going to do is increase the uh, opacity here, and then do your magic here. Okay. Now, one thing about this is that's a very harsh shadow there, um, and it's quite harsh there too, on at, at the bottom of the base of the tree. So near the boots, it's fine, but over here, it should blur out. So I'm going to grab a um, selection that is heavily feathered to 100, um, and I'm just going to select this part, and I'm going to make sure that this higher, upper part of the shadow is feathered. Sorry, not feathered, but blurred. So I'm going to go blur, Gaussian blur, and just increase that a little bit. Good. Okay. So you can see how it starts to blur up here. And maybe even more blur down here. So let's try that. Uh, repeat again. Whoops. I selected the wrong layer again. I've got to watch that. Perspective layer. Repeat. Okay, good. good. All right, so you can see sharp, blur, more blurry. Okay, good. But all in all, we're already kind of all, almost there. Um, however, there's a couple of things I wouldn't mind doing. Uh, one, I still think there's a little bit too much uh, detail going on there. One thing I do to make the colors consistent, what some people do, you can see the rest of the image is very, very heavy in blues. So what you can do is go to color, colors, color balance and increase the, um, the blue, right? And by doing that, you know, make the highlights more blue and make the shadows more blue. And what that does is it makes it more consistent with the rest of the image. However, what I like to do is simply not do that, but simply I duplicate the layer so I have a separate layer to work with. With the top layer, I simply colorize it to the very blue that is in the environment. So I just select that. Oh, let me just select that. Okay. That's the blue that's in the environment. Probably a little bit too dark, so let's make it a little bit brighter. Uh, too much contrast, let's reduce that. So that's looking like the same blue that's in the environment at the moment. I'm going to click OK. Now, it's somewhere, we've lost all the colors of the original image, so we want to bring those back. So we just reduce the opacity of the top layer. Um, so we want to go halfway between that and that. And it's halfway, it's about 50%, so let's just put it about there. Let's merge those layers down. Now, um, Something still strikes me a little bit odd about this. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to increase, play with the, play with the, um, okay. If I make it bright like that, I see, you start to see some, so there's still too much light coming on this side. So what I'm probably going to do is just, um, 
let me remove that, that was just the test. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, probably just darken that a little bit more, increase the darkness, but I'll also increase the, um, the light, right? I'll probably increase the darkness a little bit too much there, so let me just take that back a little bit, so not quite Okay, I think that's looking a lot better now. And now if I make a, if I right click and I say new from visible, that creates a new flat layer, because then with that flat layer, I can just play around with it. Uh, there's other ways you can do that. You can do that with grouping, but I prefer to just, um... and see that looks pretty good. One thing we did lose a little bit of detail over is the, um, is the face. People like the face to show, so very quickly before I finalize this image, I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight to the face. And what we do with that is, um, um, well, it's probably a little, probably too much around the shoulder as well. So I'm just going to burn that first, burn highlights. Um, so you can see I'm just darkening that there. There we go, that's a bit better. All right, now I'm going to highlight, do the opposite. I'm going to dodge the highlights, and that expresses the highlight. There we go. Yep. Oh, I'm going to get rid of that bright spot there as well. Okay. All right. Now, again, new from visible. Let's flatten it all up. Let's just add a little bit more light to the entire scene. Okay, that's my final image. I'm happy with that. Thanks for watching and any questions, please do ask.